we're going to have Andres Forgax. Andres is the co-founder and CEO of Modern Metal. Um, he's an entrepreneur in tissues engineering who is developing novel biomaterials. These materials include culture, meat, and leather, which, as they put it, will require no minimal slaughter, uh, no animal slaughter, and much lower inputs of land, water, energy, and chemicals. This approach involves sourcing cells from living animals, multiplying these cells into billions, and then assembling them into the tissues precursors of, of meat or leather. So without any further ado, please join me in welcoming Andres to the stage. Thank you, Maria. Um, we're just waiting on a clicker. Oh, that, that might be the clicker. This looks like a clicker. Perfect. Hi, great to be here. Uh, uh, thank you, uh, Future Talks, for, uh, uh, for organizing this. This is an amazing event. Um, so I'm here to talk to you about the future of materials. And in order to understand the future of materials, it is important that we consider the past, the history of materials. Now, let's pause for a minute and, and think about how important materials have been in human history. They've been so important, in fact, that we've actually defined various chapters in human history by the materials that we've been able to master. So if you look at the, uh, the history of civilization, going from the Stone Age all the way to the uh, Information Age, oftentimes, the name, the, 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 the very materials that, that we've been able to master, that we've been able to use to make uh, things around us, have actually uh, you know, defined uh, that chapter in history. So the Stone Age, for example, was the first time that uh, civilization, mankind, took from nature. And we took materials from nature, things like uh, stone, uh, bone, um, wood, wool, silk, leather, uh, and we used those materials to make our everyday objects. And now, many, many, many thousands of years later, many of those materials today are still some of our most desirable everyday materials in our consumer products, you know, like wood and wool and silk and leather. Um, and indeed, we wouldn't have had the Industrial Revolution um, if it would, were not uh, for advances in metalworking, in steelworking, that led to uh, new alloys, uh, allowed us to create new kinds of steel, new kinds of equipment, uh, new construction techniques. And even in the 20th century, uh, I mean, that was a, a century of tremendous acceleration in materials. I mean, from the early part of the century, where polymer chemistry and, uh, and, and plastics emerged, uh, to the latter half of the 20th century, where we had uh, the information revolution. That would not have been possible without advances in semiconductors. Um, and in the realm of biology, which is, uh, which is uh, a field that, uh, that my company is, uh, is working in, um, the latter half of the 20th century was a revolutionary moment when we uh, understood the nature of another material, and that material is DNA. Um, and by cracking the code of DNA, understanding how DNA worked, uh, it led to a revolution in biotechnology and later on a revolution in biomaterials. So it's only fitting that we look uh, to one of the biggest visionaries of the information age to see where the next chapter in materials or the next chapter in human history uh, may be going. And uh, Steve Jobs in the, in, the, um, you know, in, the, in the last decade of his life actually saw that um, the future of innovation, the future of materials, was going to be most interesting at the intersection of biology uh, and technology. And indeed, welcome uh, to the age of biofabrication. We believe that the 21st century, one of the defining technologies of the 21st century, is going to be um, about biology and its ability to actually inform the future of materials. Let me ask you in this room, who here has heard about biofabrication? Raise your hands. Who, who knows what it means? Okay. So biofabrication is, is really about building with biology, but not just at a molecular level, at a macroscopic level. So being able to create uh, materials and to create structures that you can actually see, feel, touch. And um, the way, um, and, 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 and biofabrication we believe is going to lead to a, a new category of materials. So remember how I talked about the past, the history of materials from uh, materials that were nature derived uh, to the 20th century where things were getting progressively more man-made or synthetic? Well, biofabrication essentially connects that arc back. We're able to take 
uh, some of the most, uh, the, some of the materials that we associate most closely with nature and completely reinvent them with human ingenuity. So it, it, it allows us to build with the proteins of nature, but to really innovate on the proteins of nature. So really in the future, it's not that you'll have a category of materials that's natural and then another category of materials that's man-made or synthetic. Um, you'll have actually a third category that's in, in many respects the best of both worlds. Um, it's basically taking the proteins of nature and creating a new category of materials on that. And, and for us at Modern Meadow, the, the inspiration, um, you know, we, we, we sought to apply biofabrication to leather, right? So our inspiration is leather. Why leather? Well, let me ask the audience here, how many of you are wearing an item made of leather or, or bought something made of leather in the last year? Raise your hands. Okay. Leather is all over, right? I mean, it's, 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 it's our, one of our most widely used materials. We associate it with all kinds of consumer goods in our apparel, in our footwear, in our accessories, in our furniture, in our, in our automobiles. Um, it, it's all over. And, and it's one of, a, it is about a, something on the order of uh, two billion square meters of leather that are processed each year. Um, it's about 100 to 150 billion dollar raw material market. Uh, so the size of that market is massive, and there's lots and lots of inefficiencies with it. Um, so we are developing uh, a, a new way to make leather-based uh, materials, materials that are inspired by leather, uh, essentially building on um, the collagen protein, which is the biological building block of leather. So collagen is the most abundant protein in your body. It's the main protein in your skin. And we've developed a way of using biotechnology to produce that collagen and then to architect materials made of that collagen. So our approach to biofabrication uh, essentially builds on uh, the principle of design, grow, and assemble. So first thing we do is we design a microorganism, uh, in this case a, a type of yeast, uh, and we, we, we design, we engineer this yeast to be able to um, produce collagen instead, you know, by eat sugar and produce collagen. So we're essentially brewing uh, collagen, right? So instead of, uh, much like you would brew beer or you would, uh, you know, you would uh, brew, I guess, or, or, or produce yogurt through, through fermentation, or um, we're able to, uh, in, instead of brewing beer or, or brewing wine, we're able to brew collagen. Um, and, um, and, and, and we have a, a cell engineering team that's basically designing our organisms and making them constantly more and more efficient. So our little factories, little cell factories, are able to eat sugar and produce collagen. The next thing we do is we practice fermentation, brewing. And we have to do a lot of optimization to make sure that our fermentations can run efficiently. So you can see this is a small scale uh, version of our, of our uh, fermentation system. We're running uh, five, many, many five liter fermentations. And in the, in the past year, we've also partnered with Avonic, which is one of the largest biochemical companies in the world. They're real experts in fermentation, and we're scaling our fermentation to tens of thousands of liters um, and eventually to be able to run fermentations over 100,000 liters uh, in, in volume. And so just imagine, I mean, uh, you know, being able to run very, very large brew tanks, um, you know, visit something that looks very much like a brewery, uh, but instead of producing beer, it's essentially producing bio leather, right? So that's, that's the, uh, the idea. Um, and then once we've run a fermentation and we take the collagen in its purified form, that collagen becomes the base material for us to be able to create a whole world of materials, right? So depending on how we assemble that collagen, depending on how we um, combine the collagen with other materials, uh, and then we tan, finish, dye, uh, that material, it can create a whole range of material properties. So this is not about imitating leather. Leather is a wonderful, beautiful material. It's got, it's got all kinds of amazing properties to it. This is about taking the building blocks of leather um, and through a, a, a fundamental process innovation, be able to come up with materials that um, bring new design, new performance, and new functionality that take some of the things we love about leather and take some of the things we love about other materials and allows us to really explore new design space. So biofabrication can really yield radical innovation in a number of different dimensions. My motivation is significantly about sustainability. I deeply care about sustainability. And one of the reasons I started this company was because I, I came to a realization that all the items we buy, 
you know, all the consumer goods that are out there, they have a costly environmental footprint. And especially those materials that are made from animal products, right? The livestock industry is a huge, um, you know, huge uh, user of land, water, and greenhouse gas emissions. It, it has a big environmental footprint. I wish that it was sufficient to create products that were just better for the environment and nothing else, and then consumers would buy it. But I think sustainability is necessary, but it's not sufficient. Um, much as, as Bjarki, who's the speaker this morning, uh, you know, he refers to a concept called hedonistic sustainability. It's important that sustainability bring joy, bring a benefit in addition to being sustainable. And if you're able to achieve that, you're able to create a product that consumers want. So for us, biofabrication is about sustainability, but it's about many more things. We have to bring a value proposition to manufacturers, to designers, to consumers, and ultimately to the planet. So for manufacturers, the benefits of biofabrication is that it takes a process which is subtractive. I mean, taking a hide from an animal, right, that you've raised in the field, you have to remove the hide. You then have to remove the hair, the flesh, and the fat from that hide through a process called beam house operations, right? It's very, uses abrasive chemistry. There's lots of pollution involved there. You then have to uh, partially tan that hide and transport it halfway around the world. Um, and and uh, you're not able to use the entire hide because it's got an irregular shape, uh, size, uh, because it's got scars and insect bites. It's got all these imperfections. So typically, most leather goods, right, are, um, when you process leather, you're typically wasting 30 to 50% of the hide, right? And that's at the end of a long supply chain. By contrast, our process is additive, so we're able to use a lot more of our raw materials, right? We're, uh, we're going from a subtractive process to an additive process. We're also shortening the supply chain dramatically, right? Instead of having to raise an animal uh, in the field, which takes years, lots of land, water, greenhouse gas emissions, we're able to take that and condense it to a process that takes less than two weeks. It's about a week to practice the fermentation and the purification of the collagen. And then uh, we can ship the collagen into markets where we want to make the material, so you can actually localize the production. And, uh, and it's less than a week to go from the collagen to making the materials, and you can make them on demand, right? So it allows for lean supply chains, on-demand manufacturing. For designers, it opens up a whole new world of possibilities. So instead of having to kind of make do with what comes off the back of an animal or you know, what, what nature offers, all of a sudden, you can take your design thinking uh, beyond the product itself and into the material, right? So it opens up a vast design space. You can actually um, engineer uh, the product rather than having to kind of, you know, cut it subtractively to, uh, to, 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 to meet your application. You can actually engineer the material to be able to, to, to mold into the applications that you want. So we, we're able to work with leather materials that can actually support complex ge geometries, that can support uh, three-dimensional forms. Um, so it allows for designers to do new things in designing their products. And again, instead of having to select from a limited palette of kind of what you get from the back of an animal, you can actually tune the material to bring new design possibilities. Uh, so the design thinking goes beyond the product, it goes into the material itself. And then finally, if you're designing for a brand, right now if you go into a mall or if you go into a department store, you'll see that the, the things that differentiates most brands from one another is marketing and design, right? They're all working pretty much with the same materials. This allows brands to actually have materials that are bespoke to their products, right? So it brings, it allows uh, brands to actually be able to, ha to have uh, access to new elements on the periodic table that their competitors don't have access to. So for consumers, all of a sudden it takes a process that's opaque uh, and allows it to become much more transparent. Let me ask the audience here, how many of you have been to a slaughterhouse? Raise your hands. Okay, some of you. How many of you have been to a leather tannery? Some of you. How many of you have been to a brewery or a distillery? Right? Many, many more of you, right? So there's a, there's a completely different consumer experience around certain manufacturing processes than others, right? Typically, most people don't want to see how the sausage gets made, right? Whereas, you know, when, when it's about brewing or about distilling, it's a much more inviting process. And that kind of transparency we can bring to animal products. And then, of course, historically, we've thought of sustainability as, as a compromise. You know, we've had to accept higher prices or inferior performance. But this actually allows us to design materials that bring 
new design, new performance, new functionality, new capabilities, and oh, by the way, it's sustainable, and oh, by the way, it doesn't harm animals, right? So it's not so much of a trade-off. It actually allows sustainability to become a premium. And then finally, for the planet, um, in, instead of working within the resource limits of, you know, the, right now our, our you know, our, our uh, you know, the livestock industry is really one of the things that's most burdensome for the planet. And this allows us to become far more resource efficient by being able to create materials uh, that don't rely on the livestock industry. And fundamentally, this allows us to create a category of materials that celebrate life, right? Um, we are a, a, a biofabrication company. We celebrate life, but we don't need to exploit sentient life to do that. So this is a fairly complex story. Um, there's lots of aspects to biofabrication. We needed to come up with a brand name for our materials to be able to explain the value proposition and, and why people should care about, uh, about biofabricated materials. And modern meadow biofabricated leather materials is just a, a really complicated name, so we didn't think that would be an appropriate brand name. But before I tell you kind of what we decided to call our materials capabilities, let me ask the audience here, how many of you can name a brand of leather material so not leather products, but leather material. Raise your hands. Isn't that interesting, right? So we're all wearing leather. We all buy leather, right? We can all name many, many brands of leather products. But leather, which is this you know, $100 billion raw material market, we can't name a brand for it. So our brand is uh, Zoa. And Zoa is the Greek word, comes from the Greek word for life, Zoe. Um, you know, our materials are a celebration of life, um, and it just so happens that Zoe is the middle name of my five-year-old daughter, so that works too. Um, and these are examples of Zoa. Uh, we can make it as a sheet material. Um, we can also process it as a liquid. So we can actually assemble our collagen and tan it in a liquid form, which allows us to paint with it. And if you can actually process it as a liquid and, and essentially work with liquid leather, it allows you to do new things, like join different fabrics with our bio leather, our ZOA material as the seam. So you can actually assemble fabrics without stitching, without gluing. So this is an example of ZOA that's been applied uh, onto a mesh without gluing or without stitching. And if you can work with it in a liquid form, you can also do kind of crazy things, like spray it onto other fabrics. Uh, you can apply it as a, as a coating. So this is an example of leather that's been, you know, bio leather that's been sprayed onto silk. So think of it, leather mist. Uh, you can go after completely new designs and new patterns, uh, zonal properties. So there's all kinds of functionalities that we're exploring with our ZOA materials. Um, we've exhibited in the Museum of Modern Art uh, last year. Um, so there's an item that's been now acquired uh, by MoMA into their permanent collection. And we did a, a pop-up exhibit in Soho. And um, let me just finish uh, by showing you a video which accompanied our Museum of Modern Art exhibit uh, last year. Thank you.